Right, in this video, we're going to be looking at solving quadratic inequalities. So these are inequalities with quadratic terms in them. So this is a quadratic function within the inequality. So there is a very clear procedure on how to solve these. First off, we want to move everything to one side so we have a zero somewhere. So I'm just going to move the four onto the left hand side. And then we have x squared minus four is greater than zero. And then the next thing that we do, it might seem a bit surprising, but we essentially ignore the inequality and we replace it by an equality. So I'm just going to write this up here, x squared minus four is equal to zero. So now this is what we're going to be considering. And this is called the critical, critical equation. And this is going to give us some information about what the solutions are going to look like. So if we just solve this, this is going to be x squared is equal to 4 and take the square root we have x is equal to 2 and x is equal to minus 2. Now these solutions x is equal to 2 and x is equal to minus 2 these are called the critical values. And now with these critical values in mind what we do next is we actually sketch this function right here. So we're going to look at the xy plane xy plane and we want to uh, sketch this quadratic function so x squared minus 4 and now this is going to look something like this it's just a parabola going upwards to infinity and now the critical values they tell us exactly where this function equals zero right we've just solved this function set it equal to zero and the critical values are exactly where this function crosses the x-axis so we're just going to label this on there and now we have to think what is this inequality asking us it's asking when this quadratic function is greater than zero. So graphically, this corresponds to values of x such that y is positive. So we're looking for values where y is greater than zero, right? So just by looking on this graph, this is going to be when x is greater than two, right? The graph is above zero. And also when x is less than minus two, because that also corresponds to when y is positive. So just from the graph and the critical values, we now know what the solutions are. They are x is less than minus 2 and x is greater than 2. So this is just a simple example of showing you the method of what we do. We find the critical equation, we find the critical values by solving that equation, and then we just look at the graph and ask what are the values of x such that the function is positive or negative. So now we're going to go into a few harder examples just to solidify the method. Okay, so let's do x squared minus 6x plus 8 is less than 0. So this is our quadratic inequality we want to solve. And on the left hand side, we have a quadratic function. So just as before, we look at the critical equation, we replace the inequality by an equality. So I'll just write this up, up here. So this is the critical equation and we want to solve it to find the critical values. Now this quadratic equation actually factorizes quite nicely. So we can write this as x minus two times x minus four. If it didn't factorize, you could use uh, completing the square or the formula. There's lots of ways you could solve this. But now we can find out the values of x that satisfy this equation by just setting each bracket equal to zero in turn and we get x is equal to two and x is equal to four. Now these are the critical values. So our next step is to sketch what this function looks like. We're going to draw out the xy plane. And we want to sketch what this uh, quadratic function looks like. And we know that it crosses the x-axis at x equals 2 and x is equal to 4. So these are the critical values. And because the x squared coefficient is 1, it's just it's positive, we know that the parabola is going to go upwards. It's going to tend towards positive infinity, so it's going to look something like this. Shape isn't too important as long as you've got the important features. But now we know that it crosses the x-axis at 2 and 4. These are the critical values. So now the problem is just asking what values of x does it make this graph less than 0? This is uh, the inequality in this case, uh, less than 0. So we want to work out when is y uh, negative. So you can just see from this graph, it actually just corresponds to when x is in between 2 and 4. These are the only values where y is negative. So from this, the solution just pops out and we get x is less than 4 and it's got to be greater than 2. So this is the solution. Okay, let's do another example. This time we're going to have a negative coefficient of the x squared term. 
So we'll have minus x squared plus 10x minus 21 is less than or equal to zero. So this is a similar problem and we just solve it using exactly the same method. So what we do is we take the inequality sign and we replace it by an equality. So we write the critical equation, minus x squared plus 10x minus 21, and we set this equal to zero. And now because we've got an inequality sign, we can manipulate it however we want. We can multiply through by minus one. This is gonna make it a bit easier. So let's do that. We'll get x squared minus 10x plus 21 is equal to zero. And we can do that now because it's set equal to zero. So we're only interested in finding the solutions of this equation. And this is also a nice quadratic because it factorizes quite nicely. We can write this as x minus three times x minus seven. And this is equal to zero. So three times minus three times minus seven gives us 21. And then the minus three x minus seven x gives us the minus 10 x. And now finding the solutions is just a matter of setting each bracket equal to zero. And if we do this, we're gonna get the critical values of x is equal to three and x is equal to seven. Okay, so just like before, we're now interested in plotting what this quadratic function looks like. So let's draw out the graph, right, x here and y here. And we know that it crosses the x uh, axis at x is equal to three and x is equal to seven. But now this time, because there's a negative coefficient in front of the x squared term, it's gonna be an upside down parabola. It's gonna go like this, from negative infinity go up and then back down to negative infinity. So we know that it's going downwards and it crosses at x is equal to three and x is equal to seven. So now this problem just reduces to asking what values of x make y less than or equal to zero. So we're looking for values of x where the curve is below the x-axis. And now it's very clear what it is. We just have the values of x that are less than or equal to three and greater than or equal to seven. And because there's a uh, it's less than or equal to sign, we also need to uh, take into the counts uh, x equal to 3 and x equal to 7, the critical values, because these are also going to be solutions. So now the solution just pops out, we can just write x is less than or equal to 3 and x is greater than or equal to 7. And these are both the solutions. So these are the sets of x values that satisfy this inequality. Okay, I want to do one final example and this time we're going to have a quadratic inequality x squared minus x minus six is greater than zero and also a linear one. So we want to solve both of these inequalities at the same time. So 10 minus two x is less than five. Let me label these uh, inequality one and inequality two. And essentially the method we're gonna use is solve each one independently on its own. And then we're gonna consider the values of x that satisfy both of those solutions at the end. So let's start off with the easy one. We're just gonna look at inequality number two, this is linear. It should be fairly easy to solve. So let's move over the two x onto the right hand side and the five on the left hand side, and we get five is less than two x. Right, I've just shifted these over. And then we can divide by two and we get five over two is less than x. So the, this is the solution of the second inequality. And now we're gonna look at the first one. This is a bit harder. So we're going to use the techniques we talked about before. We're going to take the critical equation. We have x squared minus x minus six, and we're going to set this equal to zero. So now we're going to solve this to find the critical values. And this is also a very carefully constructed inequality uh, equation because this factorizes. So we can write this as x minus three and x plus two is equal to zero. So now solving this just amounts to setting each bracket equal to zero. So we just take the number here and we flip the sign and we get x is equal to three and x is equal to two. So these are the critical values. This is where this quadratic function uh, crosses the x-axis. So just as before, the next step is to draw it out. We go to the plane, write x here, y here, and we know that it's gonna cross x-axis at minus two and minus three. You can sketch it on here. And then we're gonna sketch this. And because the x squared coefficient is positive, it, the, the parabola is going to go up like this. It's going to be a positive tending parabola. And this is what it's roughly going to look like. So again, we need to interpret the problem now um, in terms of the graph. We want the values of x such that this function is positive. It's greater than zero. So this corresponds to the values of x such that y is positive. It's 
above the x-axis. And then it's very clear to see that we just want x being greater than 3 and x being less than minus 2. So let's just write that out here. The solutions to this inequality are x is less than minus 2 and x is greater than 3. And then the final step for us is to think about the values of x to satisfy both these inequalities at the same time. So we kind of need to find the values of x to overlap for these inequalities. And we can do this using a number line. So I'll just write 0 here, and this represents all the numbers. Um, so this inequality, if we write 5 over 2 here, that's just 2.5. So this is saying we want the values of x that are strictly less than 2.5, right? That's this first inequality. Now these two inequalities are saying if we write 3 over here, we want x to be greater than 3, or we want x to be less than minus 2. I've just realized I made a mistake. This should be greater than 5 over 2. So this arrow should be pointing this way as opposed to the other way. Okay, so now the question is, where do these lines overlap? We want that x is either less than minus 2 or greater than 3, and it's got to be greater than 2.5. So instantly, this solution just goes away because we can't have it being less than minus 2 and greater than 2.5. So this disappears, and now we're just interested in values of x that are greater than 2.5 and greater than 3. And we can see that that's just going to be values of x that are actually greater than 3. So the values of x that satisfy all these inequalities at the same time is just x being greater than 3. And this is the solution to both sets of these simultaneous inequalities.